of the United States. Why did you? Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, he said, uh, if you expand mail-in voting, this is the president. This is, you know, it's th reckless. Well, this is a, you know, sort of cheap talk to get around the fundamental problem, which is the bipartisan commission chaired by Jimmy Carter and James Baker said back in 2009 that mail-in voting is fraught with the risk of fraud and coercion. But since then, and, there and until a lot this administration, no, well, they haven't I'm, proved it. Let me talk. Yeah, please. Uh, and since this, since that time, there have been in the newspapers, in networks, academic studies saying it is open to fraud and coercion. The only time the narrative changed is after this administration came in. But elections that have been held with mail have found substantial fraud and coercion. For example, we indicted someone in Texas, 1,700 ballots collected he made, from people who ha could vote. He made them out and voted for the person he wanted to. Okay? Because that kind of thing happens with mail-in ballots, there are, and everyone knows but that. But there are individual uh, cases, but as far as widespread fraud... We haven't seen that since... Uh, well, we, have, we haven't we have had the kind of widespread use of mail-in ballots that's being proposed. We've had absentee ballots from people who request them from a specific address. Now what we're talking about is mailing them to everyone on the voter list when everyone knows those voter lists are inaccurate. People who should get them don't get them, which is what has been one of the major complaints in states that have tried this in, in municipal elections. And... Uh, People who get them are not the right people. They're people who have replaced the, occup the previous occupant, and they can make them out. And sometimes multiple ballots come to the same address with a whole genera several generations of occupants. Do you think that's a way to run a vote? Well, uh, the only thing I'm saying is that so far we haven't seen widespread fraud. But so far we haven't tried it. Well, and the point is that a lot of us... Uh, there are several states that only have mail-in voting, including a Republican well, state Well, this like is playing with fire. This is playing with fire. We're a very closely divided country here. And if people have to have confidence in the results of the election and the legitimacy of the government, and people trying to change the rules to this, to this methodology, which, as a matter of logic, is very open to fraud and coercion, is reckless and dangerous, and the people are playing with fire. Well, I, I will point out there are five states that only have mail-in voting, including Utah and Colorado, Washington State, Oregon, uh, Hawaii, and they've, they've reported over the years they've had virtually no problems. But who's trying to change the rules right now? I would say the people who want to go to mass mail-in ballots. But you understand why. There is a coronavirus pandemic. Right. And there are a lot of people, uh, potentially, if they waited long lines, uh, when they go to the polls, uh, and they, could get, they could get sick, especially older people or people with underlying conditions. As a result, a lot of people want to change the rules so they don't have to go wait right. long people, lines. Well, they don't have to touch all this. And the appropriate way to deal with that is, number one, arrangements at the polls that protect people, which can be done. And number two, people who are, have pre-existing conditions and are particularly vulnerable can get an absentee ballot. I have no problem with people. I, I voted by absentee ballot, not by mail. I actually went to the office to cast my vote. But absentee ballots are fine. All right, let's move on and talk a little bit about... Uh,